Hi everyone, welcome to day two's video, section 2-2, linear relations and functions. So today's focus is lines. We'll graph lines in slope-intercept and standard form, and then we'll write and solve linear models. All right, so before we can begin, we have to understand what a linear relation is. So what we should notice is in the word linear, we see line. So linear relations are simply straight line graphs. All right, so what is a linear equation? What makes that stand out, stand out from the rest? Well, a linear equation uh, is an equation with no operations other than addition, subtraction, and multiplication. of a variable by a constant. Okay, so basically the key here is um, no variables in your denominator, no funky notation anywhere. Okay, let's take a look at some examples of linear functions versus nonlinear or linear equations versus nonlinear. Okay, so the left column here all represents linear equations, linear relations, okay? Not all necessarily functions, but we'll get into that later on, okay? So notice um, all we are doing to a variable and a constant is addition, subtraction, multiplication, okay, in these guys here. Over here on the, the right side, the first one is not a linear equation because of this y squared, okay? So that's essentially multiplying two variables together, y times y. The second equation is not a linear equation because of this square root function here, okay? Remember, no funky notation, and that square root is the funky notation. In the third one, we have two variables being multiplied together. You can't have that. Only a constant and a variable can be multiplied together. And then in the last one, here we are dividing by a, ver or by a variable. You cannot divide by a variable. You can divide by a constant. So there's a difference, okay? All right, so based on that, I want you to do this first example on your own, I want you to circle the equations or the functions that are linear. Okay, so go ahead and do that right now. Stop the video. Okay, hopefully you had a chance to do that. Um, and I'm going to leave this one for you to go over in class tomorrow to make sure you understand it. Okay, so let's go on to the next page. All right, so now we're going to get into graphing equations, graphing lines. And these two should be familiar to you. The first form we're going to graph in is slope-intercept form. And this is probably the one you're most familiar with. So slope-intercept form is in the form y equals mx plus b. Or you might see it in function notation f of x equals mx plus b, okay, where m represents our slope and b represents our y-intercept. Okay, so if we take a look at this first example here, we are going to graph y equals negative 4x minus 7. And we have to make sure to include three exact points, and we will label those right on our graph. 
So the first thing I want us to identify is our starting point, which is our y-intercept. And I want us to identify it as an ordered pair. So remember, a y-intercept is when x equals 0, and it being in slope-intercept form, it's our b value. So we should notice that our y-intercept is negative 7, so our ordered pair is 0, negative 7. Our slope is that negative 4. And when we're graphing, we can think of it as negative 4 over 1. Okay? All right, so now we're ready to go ahead and plot some points. We start with our y-intercept of 0, negative 7. So let's go ahead and mark that on our graph. And then we're going to use our slope. Remember, slope is rise over the run. So one thing we could do is we could go down 4 units, but if we do that, we're off of our grid. So if I go up 4 units, then I have to go to the left 1 unit. 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1. That's going to put us at the point negative 1, negative 3. I forgot to label our y-intercept of 0, negative 7. And I want another point, so I'd have to go up 4 units again and to the left 1. And that puts us at negative 2, 1. 3 points is enough for our line, so now we can go ahead and draw our line through these three points and we can call it a day. Okay, so hopefully you remember doing this from uh, you did a little bit of it in geometry and you also did in algebra one. Let's go ahead and now talk about standard form. So standard form of an equation looks something like this a x plus by equals c, where a, b, and c are all integers, okay? When we're graphing in standard form, I like to use what's called the pinky method. Or you might hear me say the intercept intercept method because when we're in standard form it's easy to identify your x-intercept and your y-intercept and once we have those two points we can plot them and draw our line okay so to find the x-intercept remember it's when y is 0 so the x-intercept, I could simply cover up the by portion and solve for x. So it's simply c divided by a, comma, 0. And the y-intercept, remember, is when x equals 0. So I'd cover up the ax portion on my graph, or on my equation with my pinky. That's why I call it the pinky method. So when x is 0, I'd simply solve for y by taking c divided by my b value. Okay? So let's go ahead through this next example. We're going to graph 2x plus 3y equals 12. We're going to use our intercepts to plot and then draw our line. So when we start, let's go ahead and find our x-intercept. So remember our x-intercept is the c value divided by our a value, comma, 0. So this is going to go to 6, comma, 0. Our y-intercept is when x is 0, and our y-value is the c value, which is 12, divided by our b value, which is 3, and that simplifies as 0, comma, 4. Now we go ahead, we plot these two points, and we label them. So that's 6, 0, and then 0, 4.
And now we go ahead and we draw our line through these two points. And we call it a day. All right, so if you have any questions with the graphing, make sure you bring those to the table tomorrow. And then let's go ahead and turn the page to uh, the last page of notes. Okay, we've got some model problems. So with model problems, there's always some certain steps to follow. So let's go ahead. Financial literacy. So Natalie earns a commission of $1.75 for each magazine she sells and $1.50 for each newspaper subscription she sells. Her goal is to earn a total of $525 in commissions in the next two weeks. So step one, when, whenever we're dealing with model problems, is we always define our variables. So let's go ahead and do that. Can you define the variables? What are we talking about here? So sometimes it takes us reading it over again. Natalie earns a commission of $1.75 for each magazine she sells and for each newspaper subscription she sells. So let's be creative. Maybe we use M for the number of magazine subscriptions and we want to be very specific okay and N we can represent the number of newspaper subscription she sells okay next we need to write an equation that is a model for the different number of magazine and newspaper subscriptions that can be sold to meet the goal. Okay, well, if we take a look at the number of magazines, she earns $1.75 for each magazine. So we're going to use that part in our model, 1.75m plus. $1.50 for each newspaper, so plus 1.50N. All right, and she wants to earn $525 in commission, so we're going to set that equal to 525. Okay? All right, the last thing I want you to do is answer part C on your own. If Natalie sells 100 magazine subscriptions and 200 newspaper subscriptions, will she meet her goal? All right, so I want you to justify your answer not only with algebra, all right, but also explain what that means. So tomorrow as we check over the notes, we're going to be looking for some algebra work and then a sentence kind of explaining what your work shows you. Okay, make sure to bring any questions to the table as we begin class tomorrow. All right, have a good night, everybody. See you later.